want to plot a function in the frequency domain. Uh, and this is a uh, transfer function. So we're going to plot um, log of omega over z across the horizontal here, where z is some zero. We don't know what z is. It could be uh, one radian per second. It could be a thousand radian per second. We don't know. It doesn't matter because this is a normalized curve across the horizontal. So whatever the value of z is, uh, across the horizontal here, we're going to put omega over z. Okay, so that when uh, the input frequency is equal to z, then uh, we have 0 dB. When the input frequency is 10 times, uh, then we have an output that is uh, 1 dB. Or I'm sorry, we have a value there that is 1 dB across the horizontal. Then we're going to plot against that. Uh, 20 times the log of 1 plus j omega over z. Okay? So we look at the most extreme conditions here. Uh, we let omega over z be very small compared to 1. So when we do that, then changing tool, changing colors, then J omega over z is small compared to 1, so the part inside the absolute value sign then, oh, I'm, I'm on the wrong one there, aren't I? Yeah, it's supposed to be up here. Uh, then the part inside the absolute value sign there is approximately equal to 1. And the log of 1 is equal to 0. And 0 times 20 is equal to 0, so 0 dB. So when the frequency is small compared to this 0, the location of this zero in frequency, then the uh, amplitude is zero dB, which means that at these low frequencies, I've got low frequency coming in here, then the output function at the low frequency is going to have the same amplitude as the input. Those were supposed to be sine waves. They're a little sloppy there. So then the output is going to have the same frequency. Uh, I'm sorry, the same amplitude rather as the input when the frequencies are very small. Okay. Then we look at what happens when the frequencies are very large. When uh, omega over z is large compared to 1. So under that condition, we can ignore the 1 here. The magnitude of j is equal to 1, so we can ignore the j as well. And we get uh, 20 times the log of um, uh, j omega over z. And we saw previously here that that's going to have a slope of 20 dB per decade. Uh, when uh, when we plotted this curve here before. So that's going to have a slope of 20 dB per decade. So that means that the amplitude of the output when the frequencies are, well, let's see, let's uh, draw a frequency when the frequency is very high, okay, then the output is going to have an amplitude, I'm trying to change tools, the output will have an amplitude here at that frequency. So this is this one here is at a low frequency down here. And when I'm up here at a high frequency, then this amplitude will be very large compared to the input. Okay? Because the amplitude here is up many dBs. Okay, so then that will follow this asymptote, the high frequency asymptote. That uh, it'll the uh, the slope of this curve here goes up by 20 dB per decade, and starts at the location of the zero here. 
Okay, so it goes up from 0 dB, up by 20 dB per decade from there. Uh, and then we take the example here when the frequency of the input is precisely equal to the, whoops, that wasn't what I meant to do. Deselect first. That the frequency of the input is precisely equal to the, uh, the, the zero, then the output will have a ratio that here is um, 1 plus and then omega over z is equal to 1. So we then have that's equal to 1. So we have then uh, the log of 1 plus j and the log of 1 plus j times 20 is 3 dB. Okay, so the dashed line here represents the actual um, uh, Bode plot. The solid lines are the asymptotes. That is the extremes that we go to when the frequency is very high, which is uh, 20 log of j omega over z. And the streams, extremes that we go to when the frequency is very low, which will be 0 dB. Okay. The horizontal line. So we see here that the uh, actual value of the output relative to the input here will be up by 3 dB so that this output function will have an amplitude that is twice the input at the precise frequency of the zero. The plus 3 dB means that the output is, yes, that's that's exactly what that means there, Barry. It means that the amplitude of the output function is two times the amplitude of the input function. Okay? And we know that at very high frequencies, then the amplitude is going to get very big. At very low frequencies, the amplitude will be equal to the input. The output amplitude will be equal to the input amplitude. Okay?